Hello my dear friends uh, in this video I'll be talking about rings so as I said I'm going to make a series of a videos for my TY BSc students I'm going to discuss unit 2 that is about ring so this would be the first lecture according to me I'm going to define what the ring is but before defining ring I need some pre requirements what are the pre requirements for this the first thing the student should know what is called as a group right? we are learning abstract algebra in that you should know what is a group is for that i will give the link of my video of defining what the group is okay so you can find the link in the description box i want to talk about this group in detail in this video you can go and watch that video okay. and the second idea is of the semi group these are the pre requirement that i need to define what the ring is okay. we'll talk about semi groups and also i will suggest students to read the book of galen right i just give the link of my site where you can find different reference book and in that you can find the book of galen for abstract algebra it's a really great book just go download the pdf and start reading it okay so i will define what the semi group is i assume the students know what is a group i'll just uh, give you a brief idea of the group is a group is nothing but a set with an operation which satisfy four properties what are those four properties the first property is nothing but binary second property is nothing but associativity the third property is nothing but identity and the fourth property is nothing but inverse so i know a set with an operation a set with an operation is said to be a group if it satisfy this prop four properties if it satisfy one more property the name of the property is what the name of the property is commutativity then my g star will be called abelian group okay. this are the basic idea that student should know okay they can uh, learn about this in the link that is a video other video which i have made for sybsc students so the link will be there in the description box if it satisfy this four properties we call it to be a group if it satisfy this five property we call it to be the abelian group right this commutativity means what it is a star b is same as b star a okay so now we come to the important concept and the new concept for all of you. that is something but idea of a semi group semi group the word itself gives its definition means it is half group means a set g with an operation star is called semi group if if it satisfy only two properties if it satisfy two properties which are nothing but binary and associativity i'll just try to write binary and associativity in terms of the operation that is my a star b is an element of g for all a and b inside the set g the second this means it is binary my operation is binary and the second is associativity so i'll just write it in terms of the star so it is a star b star with c is same as a star with b star c for all a b c inside g and this is nothing but associative so a semi group is nothing but a half group correct so if you know this much i can define what is called as a ring okay, let me just define a ring so ring is one step higher to the group in the group we have a set with two operations defined on it Uh, one operation defined on it, but the ring is nothing but a set with the two operation defined on it. So I'll just try to write a set R, a set R with the operation operation plus n dot plus means addition. We are you if you understand the idea of the ring. Once I complete the definition, you will understand what is actually the ring is. For now, I am just denoting the operation by plus and the dot. these are nothing but the notation this does not implies me my operation is addition and multiplication a uh, operation with the two operation plus a dot is said to be ring is said to be ring said to be ring if it satisfy the following property if it satisfy the following property property what are those properties first is my r under addition means that set with the first operation must be an abelian group means r plus is an abelian group okay the second property is my r under the second operation must be a semi group is a semi group semi group and the third property is between this two operation there is a distributivity that means if i have a b plus c then it is same as 
A B plus A C where there is a dot operation between them. One more note for the student is my A dot B will be usually denoted by A B. Okay, this is nothing but a notation. Okay, so if there is written A B, that means it is A dot B. Means between these two, I am applying the operation of dot. It could be any operation which you define. Not necessary. It will be product. Okay, it might be composition. It might be possible. I define my a dot b is same as a raised to b. It might be possible. Okay, it depends on you how the operation you are defining on a set. Similarly, the distribution is true from the other side also. That means if you have b plus c times a, it is same as b dot a plus c dot a, and this should be true for what all a b c inside the ring R, okay. inside the set R. If it is true. Means if these three, three properties are actually true, then we call the ring is the set is nothing but a ring under those two operations, and the notation is to notation to write as R under addition and the operation of multiplication is a ring. Okay, so now we'll see some example. Before that, let us just revise the idea of a ring again, again fast. Okay, the set R with the two operation will be said as a ring if it satisfy three properties. Three properties are under addition, it is a Bailen group. Under multiplication, it is semi-group, and there is a distributivity. Whenever I am saying it is an abelian group under addition, that means what? It is satisfying five properties. Correct? Uh, binary, associativity, and identity, inverse, and commutativity. Semi-group, it is satisfying two properties. And over here, it is satisfying one property that is distributivity in the both the way. I am considering both as a one property. So, for a set to be a ring under two operations, it satisfies eight properties. i will give you some example of the rings since they are sim simple examples i want students to verify those things okay so few simple examples are what my z under addition and multiplication my q under addition and multiplication my r under addition and multiplication my c set of all complex number under addition and multiplication r ring under the operation i need to define operation because uh, my set being a ring or not it is completely determined by how the operation is behaving so my this sets this four sets are ring under standard addition and multiplication okay so these are nothing but a simple example of the ring i hope the students will be able to prove these things are ring or not okay these are the really simple things i will give you some different example and difficult example that i will prove i will prove that i will prove that my uh, set zi set of all Ga gaussian integers which is defined as a plus ib where my a and b are integers i will show that this set is a ring under usual addition addition and multiplication okay so uh, my writing is so good that you guys can at least read it so you guys just keep writing the notes let's just continue with it so my claim is to prove this is nothing but a ring i know it should satisfy eight properties so i'll just write eight properties over here what i'll do i'll consider any three elements any three elements are nothing but a i any three elements i just want right i just want any three elements so i'll just write Uh, alpha beta gamma alpha is nothing but a1 plus i a2 beta is nothing but b1 plus i b2 and gamma is nothing but c1 plus i c2 these are nothing but elements of zi correct but this are integers the first thing that i would need to check it is an abelian group under addition so that means i have to prove eight properties okay. if i consider any two elements alpha plus beta then i'll any two element alpha and beta inside that set and i'll consider alpha plus beta that will be nothing but a1 plus i a2 plus b1 plus i b2 okay. if i add them the output is nothing but a1 plus b1 i know how to add two complex numbers so and it is a2 plus b2 since this uh, uh, this real part and imaginary part will be integers i know this is nothing but element of a so i know it is binary also associativity is inherited in inherited from c from complex number since i know addition is associative under complex number this usual addition is associative under complex number 
the same property will be true inside any subset of C. Correct? Hence, I am not proving the part of associativity. I am just using since inside C it is true, it should be true inside Z I also. Correct? The third property is, so uh, my dear friends, I am using the concept of inheritance. That means since I know this Z I is actually a subring, a, a ring inside C. We will learn about the concept of subring, but I know this Z I is nothing but a part of C and addition is associative inside C, entire, entire, entire the set C complex number and Z I is a part of it. Hence, most of the property will get inherited. The property which will not, we will just think about them. Okay? So, 0 uh, is nothing but element of Z I such that if I do alpha plus 0 or 0 plus alpha, my answer is again alpha. So, identity element exists. For any alpha inside Z I, I know that my minus of alpha will also be an element of Z I. Yes or no? Correct. So, inverse for every element exists. This minus alpha, there exists minus alpha inside Zi such that alpha plus minus alpha is equal to 0, uh, which is same as, uh, sorry, 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 it should be equal. It is equal to minus alpha plus alpha. Right? So, I know it is nothing but satisfying this property. Also, since I know my addition is commutative under C, it will be commutative under Zi also. So, my alpha plus beta will be same as beta plus alpha for any alpha and beta since since my alpha and beta are the elements of z i and which is subset of c since it is true inside c it will be true inside z i also since we are working on usual addition and usual multiplication most of the properties are going to be true okay. so let's see the six properties nothing but uh, binariness under multiplication so i'll consider alpha into beta that is nothing but a1 plus i a2 b1 plus i b2 so this is same as a1 b1 minus a2 b2 okay you can multiply these things plus i times a2 b1 plus a1 b2 okay again since this and this are going to be integers why they will be integers because i know my a1 b1 a2 b2 are all integers and if i multiply them i get integer if i add them i get an integers hence my final product after multiplying that i am getting is again an element of z i only the third property is associativity. It should be associative under multiplication. Again, I will inherit it from C. Since my alpha, beta and gamma are element of C, I can write it is same as, these two things are same. Since my alpha, beta, gamma are elements of C. Correct? Since in the under C, I know that my multiplication is associative. My multiplication will be associative under Z I also. Correct? So no properties, no difference. We are just inheriting this properties. The idea of inheritance will be useful when we will be running, uh, learning that idea of subrings. Okay? Let's see the fourth, eighth property, the last property. That is, I need to check alpha beta plus gamma is same as alpha beta plus alpha gamma. That also, my beta plus gamma alpha is same as beta alpha plus gamma alpha. Now, again, same thing. Since I know I can distribute uh, the number under multiplication or over addition inside C, I can do the same thing inside Z also. This is true since my alpha, beta, gamma are element of Z i but that Z i subset of C. So over here you will see except few properties. We have proved first one, this one, this one, this one. So while proving my Z i is a ring. I just need to prove this four properties. Others property, if you see, those are nothing but getting inherited by knowing that these are nothing but elements of C and under C, since the property is true, hence it must be true inside the subset of it also. So there are only four properties which are main property when we are checking a ring inside some other bigger ring. Correct? But for now, I know this eight properties are true. Hence I can conclude by this ZI under addition and multiplication is a ring okay so uh, in the next video we'll be discussing more things about more examples and more theory part we'll see but i hope the idea of the ring is clear i request all the students to just write in the comment section how was the video because this is the only thing that i want from the students uh, write your doubts in the comment section if you like it just share it with your friend okay so bye bye